with Julia at farmhouseharvest.net. Today I just wanted to show you what I'm going to be making for Easter. It is a sourdough carrot cake, but is made with iron corn. So it's an iron corn sourdough carrot cake. Um, if you're not familiar with iron corn, it is an ancient grain. It is the great grandparent of all the wheats that we have today. And it only has, I think it's got like 12 or 13 chromosomes where the wheat we have now is like 42 chromosomes. Not that it's genetically modified, but it's naturally genetically modified. So it has less gluten in it and it's easier for people with gluten intolerances to tolerate. It also has a nice buttery essence or flavor to it. And it's really good. So I'm super excited to do this carrot cake recipe with iron corn and sourdough. Sourdough just gives a depth of flavor that you can't get any other way. Plus it ferments the grains so that they're easier to digest and better for your body. It also makes all the vitamins and nutrients in the iron corn much more bioavailable to your body to use and to absorb. Iron corn is actually like so much more, has so much more vitamins and nutrients in it than regular wheat does. I think it's got like, I think regular wheat has a couple hundred milligrams of like vitamin A and iron corn has like 700 milligrams of it. So it's a lot more vitamins. And then when you ferment it, you make those vitamins a lot easier for your body to absorb from it. So it's very nutritious. There is sugar in this recipe. It's brown sugar and then the frosting has powdered sugar in it, but it's Easter, so we're celebrating. Um, last night, I did mix up a batch of the dough and it's been fermenting on my counter overnight. It does have eggs in it, but if you're not comfortable with letting eggs ferment on your countertop overnight, like I am, then you can put it in the refrigerator and let it ferment in the refrigerator. It just ferments at a slower rate. So this recipe is super simple. It's two and a half cups of iron corn flour, four eggs plus one egg yolk. And then you like put something in and make cake in it. We use three fourths a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of cinnamon. I use one and a fourth cup of cream instead of oil. And then you make cocoa in it and you just put chocolate in it you want to make cookies. Oh, chocolate would be good in it, huh? Um, one and a fourth, one and three fourths cup of brown sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla, half a cup of sourdough starter, and then we do, I'm doing two cups of grated carrots and one cup of... And we, we just put chocolate in it and you just mix it in. I didn't put any chocolate in it this time. <laughs> one cup of walnuts and then that's it and and then you let it ferment overnight and then, what did you put it in? And then before we we're gonna butter our cake pans and flour them really good you can use parchment paper if you want but and I'm, then I'm gonna butter one you're gonna, yeah, he's gonna help me butter that anyways before we put it into our cake pans we're gonna add one teaspoon I can't remember if it's one or two I've got to look of baking soda I believe it's just one teaspoon of baking soda. And then we'll butter it, put it in here, and then put it in our oven for 35 to 45 minutes or just until a toothpick comes out clean. For the full recipe and all the instructions, go to farmhouseharvest.net and it will be on the first page. Or you can search Easter. <laughs> I'm happy to be with you video. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I like to be with videos. Yeah. I saw you and I wanted to get a gummy. Can I help you with that? Uh, I got it. Let me help get in the corners, okay? I put it in the corners really good. Okay. All right, buddy, I think that looks good. 
give me your bed and I'll put it on the plate. So, buttering your pan and then dusting it with flour just really helps the cake to come out easy without sticking to the pan. Yes. Is this just my finger? No. Why? Because it's got fermented eggs in it. Uh, yep. Yucky. Yep. Only you? No, it has to cook. What? You can't eat it until it cooks. We can eat it in it? We can eat it in the oven? Okay, so we did mix our baking soda in with our sourdough einkorn carrot cake. And then we put it in our buttered cake pans that you helped me butter really good. And they, we popped them in the oven. So you do want to preheat your oven to 350 and move your oven racks to the center rack. And we just, we didn't stir, we didn't put that in it, but it was so strong. And then try to pour the batter evenly into the cake pans as best as you can. And then set your timer for 35 minutes and check it with a toothpick. It can be between 35 and 45 minutes, depending on your oven. But I I always go for the lowest number and then check because I don't and want it to, I hate like, dry cake. And then she like start in and then she put it in the, uh, oh. And corn sourdough cakes only took 35 minutes to bake just so that you guys know. And then I took them out of the oven and put them in the freezer 
because they're easier to frost if they're stiff. So these are in the freezer while we make our frosting. So for the frosting, we're gonna do a cream cheese frosting. You could make this healthier by just using maple syrup instead, but I'm gonna use some powdered sugar, butter, and a little bit of coconut cream. And then I will be chopping up some walnuts and sprinkling that on top, but it'll be a two layer cake with cream cheese frosting in the middle and the sides and top. So um, I'm gonna be actually making a lot of cream cheese frosting because I'm gonna, I'd rather have, I'd rather have too much than not enough. So two packages of eight ounce cream cheese packages. These have been sitting on my counter for an hour or so. So that they could soften up a little bit. So we've got two packages. That. And then we will be using a half cup or one stick of butter. as much powdered sugar in my frosting and my cream cheese frosting as most people do. I'd rather have it be more cheese than sugar. More cheesy than sugary. Um, so I'll probably use about four cups since this is about a double batch. put in a couple tablespoons of my coconut cream. And it was in the refrigerator, so it's kind of hard. Got a little hard on there. That just helps it get going. But honestly, my jar just broke in my hands. So <laughs> I'm just gonna dump a little bit in there. So usually you just use a few tablespoons of that and it helps get everything going. I set my jar down too hard on the hard countertop. And it broke, the bottom of it broke, but it doesn't normally happen. So I'm just gonna grab a new jar. Put the rest of my coconut milk and coconut cream in there. And one more thing that I like to put in my cream cheese frosting that most people don't is just a tiny bit of salt because I feel like the salt kind of evens out the sweetness of it. Just put a little pinch of salt in there. I'm using the pink Himalayan salt but it's ground fine. You could use any kind of salt you want. Just a couple pinches of that. And then we will just blend it. The hand blender. You can do this in your KitchenAid too, but. So I'm just kind of mixing it in first, kind of breaking up the big chunks of cream cheese and butter.
So hopefully these will come out of the pan easily. I'm just gonna run my knife around the edges. And then try to push it around a little bit and loosen it. Feels like it's gonna come out good, and I'm gonna put a little scoop of icing on the bottom of my cake pedestal to hold it in place. I'm not a professional, but <clears throat> this is how I do it. It's easy and it's very good. Came out, came out of the pan good. <laughs> See if we can get the second layer to come out as good as the first layer. Run your knife around the edges and then start loosening, loosening the sides. That's why it's really important to butter your pans really well, especially in the corner edges, and then. Make sure you have that really covered with butter and then sprinkle your, put a, a tablespoon or two of a flour in there and make sure you get it floured really good so that it will come out easily. This one came out, this one came out even better than the first one. This frosting, when you first make it, it is a little bit loose, but when you put it in the refrigerator, it will get nice and hard again. So after I'm done decorating this, I will be putting it in the refrigerator so that the icing can chill just for a little bit. This cake pedestal was my, my grandma's and she gave it to me when she sadly had to go into a nursing home, but it's something that I treasure of hers. She's not with us anymore. So I, I had a lot of things like that. Like my wheat grinder was my great grandma's. My great grandma gave it to my mom when my mom was young and my mom gave it to me when I was first married. I think everyone passes it along when they get a new one. So I'm going to get a mock mill and then I'll pass it on to my daughter. But it works great. So there's no point in not using it unless you're going to get a new one and pass it on to someone else who could use it. But it still works really good. It's over 100 years old. And I just like having stuff like that around the house and sharing it, keeping it in the family. So this cake pedestal is special to me too. Funny thing is, is my grandma's birthday was April 6th, which just passed. This is, this cake, I'm so excited for it. I love carrot cake, but especially for Easter, I love carrot cake. So hopefully my family will enjoy the new einkorn sourdough carrot cake.
So once you're happy with the frosting, I'm gonna add chopped walnuts on it. Just around the edges. If I was really cool, I'd add it to the side right here. But that's a little beyond my capabilities. And this adds, this is so much easier and it just adds the same texture to the cake that nut lovers will love. And I just love carrot cake with nuts in it. You could use pecans or walnuts. I'm using walnuts. And voila! So I used most of my cream cheese frosting. I do have probably about a cup of it left. And I'll just put that in the refrigerator because my kids will enjoy it on pancakes or waffles um, or muffins if I end up making muffins. But I just hope you guys try this recipe. If you don't have a sourdough starter and you want to start, I do have a blog post on farmhouseharvest.net that teaches you how to make a sourdough starter. But if you can get it from a friend, it's a lot easier and gets you going a lot faster. Um, and Ha <laughs> ha!